you know, my ex-husband, or as I sometimes like to think of him, my baby daddy, is the um, visionary entrepreneur. I met him when uh, I was 18, he was 19. We were at college. He would call me up. He always had classical music playing in the background. And he would ask me out, and I would say no. And he would call me up again, and he would ask me out, and I would say no. And it went on like this until we ended up living together in an apartment in the Bay Area, which we shared with uh, three roommates and a miniature dachshund who was not house trained. By the time we divorced, we were living in a house in Bel Air with no roommates and a miniature dachshund who still was not house trained. So it's a really funny Simpsons episode. Elon has this uh, meaningful relationship with Homer. It's very romantic. And at one point, the Smithers character says to another character that somebody like Elon must have a darkness in his soul. And as a dark fantasy writer who's had novels published by uh, major publishers and stories and anthologies and has a blog, this line leaped out at me because I actually think a lot about creativity and darkness and the larger-than-life nature of these people that we call visionaries and geniuses, or as my son likes to say, genii. And darkness does not have to mean evil. You know, it can refer to anything that has not yet been brought out into the light, that lives in the space beyond boundaries, beyond our comfort zone, where a lot of us do not want to go. The writer Lucy H. Pierce has a quote that I like a lot. She says, As creatives, our job is to uncover what lies in the darkness and give it new life, new identity. And I realize that artists and entrepreneurs are a lot alike and that they are both obsessed with creating something out of nothing, with pulling value from the dark. So when I was preparing this talk, I uh, said to Elon, you know, so do you have any advice that I could maybe give to bright young things in the audience who might want to like, grow up to be you one day? And he did say something, which I'll get to at the end. But he also said, you know, I don't know if they would still want that, if they really knew what it's like to be me. And it made me think that before we call these people visionaries, before they have that kind of success, we have other words for them. We call them, you know, geek or outsider, socially awkward, weird, a little different, odd one out. I'd been friends with uh, one person for 10 years before he told me that when he was a kid, he hated going to school because the other kids liked to follow him home and they would throw soda cans at his head. So he sought refuge in computer games, which got him into coding, which led to the creation of his first company, which he sold by the time he was in his mid-twenties. So, you know, nobody is throwing cans at him now. One of the most interesting pieces of advice I ever got as a writer was to start out by imitating the voices of your literary heroes, which is what most of us tend to do anyway, but to pay special attention to those places where your voice does not sound like your hero's voice anymore because it's starting to insist on doing its own thing because that's the direction that you should go in. And I think in life, a lot of us reach that point earlier than others because of the way difference is kind of baked into the way that we see the world. It is not your business to determine if it is good or if it is valuable or how it compares to any other expression. It is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly and to keep the channel open. And part of the work of keeping the channel open is to show up day after day after day at a room of your own or a corner of your own where you can pursue your obsessions. The mythologist and the academic Joseph Campbell referred to this as your bliss station and uh, he recommended that everybody have one because it's at your bliss station where you can discover who you are as a creative and you can get on and you can stay on the road to mastery because it's when you get really good at whatever it is that you do that the meaning you create for yourself resonates with the inner lives of others. The best stories are the ones that we surface from the dark. I believe that there are people who learn how to carry the sins of a village, who learn how to interrogate that darkness instead of being crushed by it. And they are the ones who become the truth tellers and the provocateurs the artists and the visionaries of the culture. And they use their art and their magic and their tech and their intellect to not only show us who we are in a way that we can understand and accept, 
but also who we can be. They create new tribes and new worlds that call their people home. During my years with Elon, I became familiar with a distinct and deeply tribal mentality known as engineers. And once when my dad came to visit, I was taking him to see Elon at Elon's first company, uh, Zip2. And we were crossing through the office park and we saw these lanky dudes in jeans and t-shirts and they were racing these remote controlled contraptions around the parking lot and banging them into cars. And my dad said to me, oh, are these the children of the engineers? And I said, no, dad, these are the engineers. And when Elon and I would travel, and we had to fill out those um, forums at customs that wanted us to know your occupation. You know, Elon never wrote down CEO or king of the world or studly international playboy. He wrote engineer, and he wore jeans and t-shirts to work. And whenever we went shopping for clothes or later consulted with the stylist whose name was Martin, he would say, no, no, you don't understand. I can't look cool or hip because I have to look like an engineer. And one of the things that he told me although I don't know if it's as true now as it was back then, was that engineers could not quite figure out why it was that the suits made the big money when it was the engineers who actually built the stuff that they were selling. And meanwhile, the suits would listen to the engineers talk and they would have no idea what they were saying. And that's when I realized that Elon was somebody who had learned to speak both languages and he could move between the tribes because he was an engineer in a suit and he brought together worlds. This is what a visionary does. They not only create something new, but they become the living embodiment of it. They don't just tell us a new story, they are that story. And soon they don't even have to open up their mouths, they just walk into the room. I recently read a profile on Elon, and he's quoted as saying something to a friend, and this happened during the uh, time we were still married together. And he said something to this friend that he never said to me. And he was saying that he was prepared to sacrifice everything, his entire fortune, to get a rocket into orbit. And he said, I don't care if Justine and the kids and I end up living in Justine's parents' basement. I'm going to make this happen. And so I read this and I kind of wanted to go back in time and go up to him and take him by the shoulders and look him very seriously in the eyes and say, have you seen my parents' basement? So I'd like to wrap up by uh, getting to Elon's advice, which is to always go beyond memorizing formulas, passing tests, to always go deep into the underlying principles of a subject, to track any problem down to the root cause buried in the dirt in the dark. And I would add to that and say, be brave enough, be bold enough, and be insane enough to see things more completely, more vividly, more fully than everybody else around you. And refuse to look away from what you see and what you know, even if people want to burn you at the stake. Because visionaries, they take all that passion and their badass personalities, unlike anybody else you'll ever meet. And it's this, that allows them to open up windows into another deeper reality in which transformation is possible and things of awe happen on a regular basis. Because in the beginning, we don't trust them because we think they're crazy, but by the end, we trust them because we know they're crazy. They're crazy enough to accomplish anything and risk it all in order to bring us something new to believe in. Thank you. <laughs>